Welcome to the Complete Story Series, where we break down your favorite trade paperbacks in single issues and we turn them into digestible bites. And then we read it dramatically back to you! All alterations to the panel's text and images are done to prevent copyright problems, and all art is owned by the respected companies. Now this is a part of our massive Jeff Johns Green Lantern storytelling, and this takes place right after Green Lantern Brightest Day. So, if you want to get caught up, I do recommend starting with Blackest Night, going into Green Lantern Brightest Day, watching regular Brightest Day, and then coming here. Anyway, when we last left off, Krona had just left the planet Earth with every single one of the entities. Well, all of them, except for Predator. Hal Jordan was rescued from the event by the Justice League, and instead of asking them for help, he teamed back up with every other corps to go and stop Krona. Atrocitus, Saint Walker, Indigo One, Sinestro, and Larflees that was Hal Jordan's new team. And he was beginning to wonder, how long had it been since he took off the ring? Our next question is, where is the Predator if it's the last entity needed? Well, it's being kept on the Zamarian homeworld. And the Star Sapphires, they should have been able to prevent Krona from taking the Predator. Except that they were just in a battle with Hawkworld, the origins of Hawkman and Hawkgirl. This story is chronicled in our Brightest Day video, the non-Green Lantern one. But due to this, Corona gained the Predator, and he now has every entity in his control. And he makes sure that Hal and his team are 100% aware of this, as he launches a giant version of his own head, screaming, THE ENTITIES ARE MINE! while throwing Carol Ferris back at them. Indigo One takes this opportunity to lock onto his energy from the giant taunting head, and the whole group teleports to where he's keeping the entities. The planet of Riot the ex-homeworld of Atrocitus. Hal turns to all of the other cores and simply states, we're not friends, but let's agree to work together one last time. Once we get our entities back, we'll go our separate ways and we'll never speak of this again. And all of the cores agree. They step deeper into the world that Krona is calling home, deeper into its history, until they stumble upon the Book of Black. Sinestro is in awe. This book is ripped right out of the Guardian's prophecy, and it contains their darkest secrets. And the book calls out to them, detecting new Guardians. And it reveals the truth behind Krona. He was simply a Guardian, but the only Guardian who knew emotion. He created a way to utilize the power of the green light, the power of willpower, the power of the First Lantern, and he showed the other Guardians the need for something non-mechanical by altering the programming of the Manhunters so that they would kill an entire sector, Atrocitus' sector. The whole group just stands there in awe, and Atrocitus just says, I knew this already. This is why I'm here to kill Krona, eye for an eye. But Carol asks the more important question, why would Krona leave the Book of Black just sitting here like this? And just then, Larfley sees his orange lantern come flying out of the giant book, and he freaks out, screaming, MY LANTERN! And he jumps over to it, only to be grabbed by a series of black chains and pulled into the book. Your stories belong to me now, Larflees, it declares to him. The rest of the New Guardians turn, and they see a blue-skinned woman standing over the book. I am Lisa Drack, the story vampire. And she proceeds to throw her black chains around everyone's neck so that she can add their stories to her book. Back on Oa, the Guardians are having a discussion. They decide that they need to come to terms, that there has been nothing but failures. The First Lantern didn't work out. Then this whole situation with Krona in which they needed to imprison him, twice. And then there's Sinestro's betrayal, and now Hal Jordan. Hal Jordan needs to be brought in to answer for his insubordination. He's refusing to listen again. But Hal Jordan is just the tip of the iceberg. These imperfections need to be eliminated. But before they can continue their discussions, before they can decide what they're going to do about the imperfections in the universe, a blast of energy from the entire emotional spectrum comes flying through with them. Krona has arrived on Oa, and he's not here to play games as he has every entity at his disposal. The Guardians all turn to him and they tell him, it's useless, you cannot defeat our combined power. But Krona just laughs. Let me show you my rage, as he rips one of the Guardian's jaw clean off of his face. He then tells the entities, pick your hosts. Back with Hal Jordan and the new Guardians, Elisa Drack laughs as the book pulls everyone into the book, one by one. As it sucks them in, they turn into various pages of the book. Atrocitus, Saint Walker, Larflees, Indigo One, they are nothing more than stories in the Book of Black now. And Sinestro calls out, Lisa, you are a Sinestro Corps member, cease this! But she just laughs. You left me to rot in this book during the blackest night. I called to you, and you ignored me. Krona saved me. And with that, Sinestro and Carol get sucked into the book. 
And just as Sinestro is going in, he pushes everything in his ring into Hal Jordan to break the chain that is on Hal Jordan and throw Hal Jordan clear of the book. It didn't leave everyone else free though, as each one of the core's rings bounced off the ground. The book was able to suck up each member for their stories, but it wasn't able to take their rings. Hal grabs all of the rings, ready to think of a way to save everyone. Meanwhile, the Honor Guard of the Green Lantern Corps is returning to the main universe from the Antimatter Universe along with Ganthet. The moment they returned, they see Parallax is back inside of the Green Lantern Battery. They all saw a flash of the yellow impurity being restored, and they saw a flash of Parallax's face. And because of this, every Green Lantern is suddenly becoming hypnotized, and they all begin to fly towards Oa under the control of Krona. Every Green Lantern except for Kyle, John, and Ganthet. No, the three of them begin to fight amongst each other, with their worst fears coming to light. But Ganthet realizes what's going on, and he screams for Kyle and John to remove your rings. Remove them now! Parallax is using your fears against you! This just causes Kyle and John to fight against Ganthet, as they refuse to lose their rings. So he uses all of his power to make miniature versions of himself, constructs that can take their rings off of their fingers. And all three rings go to his hand, where they all explode. All three of them crash land on Oa but without their rings. John quickly bandages Ganthet's stubble of a hand as the three of them apologize and realize that they need to hide. Corona has sent out every Green Lantern that he's controlling to find the three of them. Ganthet pushes Kyle and John away saying, save the Green Lantern Corps, save everyone Kyle. I thought you were our best hope once before and you can be again. While this is going on, Guy Gardner was with Kilowog, and both were attacked by the rest of the Green Lantern Corps. Guy got away, but Kilowog was taken prisoner. Guy panically calls out to the Corps, Is anybody out there? Anyone? Somebody answer me! And Hal Jordan gets the call. But the only words that they can get across subspace are Greenhouse. The safe house that all of the Earthling Green Lanterns have created. So the two of them head to the frozen and frigid planet, so far removed from the rest of the universe that the rest of the Corps will never find them and they put this whole thing together. Anyone who's been affected by Parallax before appears to be immune to his mind control, which means Guy, Hal, Kyle, John, Ganthet, and Kilowog are all immune. But as they begin to discuss it, they also begin to argue about it, and they begin to fight just like Kyle and John did. Parallax has his claws in them and Hal can see it. So before they can kill each other, he tells Guy, take off your ring, Parallax is getting at us. They both remove their rings, leaving us with only four people who need to save the entire core, separated by galaxies with no superpowers. But luckily, Hal Jordan stole the Interceptor spaceship and he put it in the greenhouse last year. So once him and Guy find it, they're headed off with help from the ship's AI, Aya. The two of them fly straight into Oa, right into the hornet's nest, and as soon as they get there, they see Kilowog, now working for Corona because he has both a yellow and a green ring. So that's how he can gain control of the people who have fought against Parallax before. Guy and Hal run to the escape pod and they get real close for comfort as Kilowog destroys the Interceptor. Their escape pod crashes onto the Owen surface and very conveniently lands Guy and Hal in front of John and Kyle. Hal looks at the other three Earth Green Lanterns and says, this is perfect. As I told you, Carol and the others were sucked into the Book of Black, but their rings weren't. If we're gonna fight against Krona and the entire Green Lantern Corps, we're going to need to choose new powers. And with that, he holds out every other core's ring. He has one of each. Guy steps forward and says, if we're picking new cores, I want to go first. I'm not going to get stuck wearing a crystal thong, because pink ain't my color. So Guy takes the red ring, since he's experienced rage before. And Hal takes the yellow ring, since he's had experience with fear before. Kyle has hope, or at least that's what Ganthet has told him, so he takes the blue ring. And John appears to be filled with compassion. So he takes the indigo ring. While John and Kyle are trying to learn their new rings, and Guy is fighting off his massive amounts of rage that he's getting, Ganthet is trying to fight off the entire Green Lantern Corps by himself, as a portion of them are headed for the four Earthlings. Hal grabs his friends, and they take off right for the location that Ganthet is at, and they see him decimating the core with his power. He hears Lantern Kyle in the distance, and a smile forms on his face. Did you bring help already? Only to have his smile turn to a frown when he sees what they've done. He turns quickly to Hal and he says, Did you make them do this, Lantern Hal? Because you see, Kyle is ill-equipped for the blue ring. John does not understand compassion. And that red ring is a death sentence for Guy. Just then, the entire Green Lantern Corps begins their assault again. But Kyle uses the blue ring to reach past their green rings and into their minds to calm them. And it works, at least it appears to, as everyone in the Corps stops their assault. But just then, a beam from the planet Mogo comes down on top of Ganthet. 
It appears Corona got Mogo also. With Ganthet finally defeated, Hal, Kyle, John, and Guy all try their best to hold off the entire Green Lantern Corps and the planet that's shooting down on top of them. And Guy douses the entire Green Lantern Corps in red napalm of rage, while Hal leads them to an underground lair where they can hide. Underground, they decide that they need a plan, but they can't decide if they should be going right for the power battery to remove Parallax, or to remove the planet-sized problem that's over their heads, known as Mogo. The arguing gets a little heated, so Kyle creates Lazy Boys for everyone to sit down on, and simply says, all will be well. They vote where they should go first, and the decision is made to go for the power battery by traveling beneath the surface of the planet to avoid the Green Lantern Corps and Mogo. But as they dig their way through the underground layers of Oa, they don't get to the battery. The first place that they end up is the armory of the Guardians, where they discover all of the old artifacts from back in the day. The Manhunters, old weapons, and the gauntlet that Crony used to take the power from the First Lantern's ring. After a little argument with the being that guards the gauntlet that houses the first ring, Guy puts it on. But then they realize how much worse everything is about to get. Mogo is a living planet, but he's also a planet that sends out all of the rings to the new recruits. He's about to spit out tainted rings all over the galaxy, so not only will they have to fight the entire current core, but billions of new recruits. John says, that's it. Our mission has changed. We need to go stop Mogo. But Hal disagrees. They're minutes from the power battery. How can they turn away at this point? But Kyle agrees with John. They need to stop Mogo. And before Hal can say anything else, John says, I'm definitely getting the hand of this indigo ring. And he teleports out of the armory and ends up five feet away. Kyle looks at him and says, you're kidding, right? John just snaps back at him. Cut me some slack. I got this, Kyle. And they teleport to Mogo. Well, Hal and Guy won't be stopped. And they decide to go the last mile to the power battery only to actually be stopped by the Guardians. Or what was the Guardians, as they're now all possessed by the Entities. The Entities start screwing with Guy and Hal, with Ion telling Hal that he has so much willpower, and Adara telling him not to embrace the fear. He has to overcome as there is hope. Guy tells Hal that they need to leave. They can't face off with every Entity. But Hal can feel Parallax. He's right there on the other side of this wall. So Guy turns and he throws his napalm on the Entity of Compassion, and the Entity of Average jumps into the fight. And Guy says, that's it! Let's try this gauntlet out. And he starts it up, and he feels the power of a dozen Green Lantern rings going through his body. But before he can use it, Guy takes a blast from every emotion in the spectrum, from Krona himself, knocking out both Guy and Hal. When they wake up, they find themselves being wrapped in the evolving bandages. You see, Krona and the Guardians were once tall, strong, and humanoid. But these bandages evolved them into beings of higher power, and of higher thought. Krona has decided that the fate of the universe needs to be in the hands of those who understand it once he's done conquering it. And those hands will be Hal and Guy's. So he wraps them up in the bandages so they can evolve. Meanwhile, Kyle and John pop out in front of Mogo and see all of the rings going out. That's 10,000 rings going out to create a whole new army for Krona. And they try everything they can think of to stop it. They cork the bottle. They empower the rings at blue light hoping to control them. But nothing's working. And so they decide to go deeper inside of Mogo until they can find his brain. And it's then that Kyle tries to tap into Mogo's hope. And it appears to be working. But there's one thing wrong. Mogo still has the Black Lantern and Purity from the Blackest Knight in his core. They can't stop Mogo. It's a combined effort of Krona with a Green Lantern ring with the impurity of yellow and Black Lantern goop. So with the Green Lantern Corps approaching to stop John, and with Mogo sending out rings to recruit everyone into Krona's army, and with Kyle out of commission because of the blast of Black Lantern energy, John sees one option. He looks at Mogo, and while this isn't Mogo's fault, he needs it to be stopped. And if he doesn't, the entire galaxy will be lost. He simply says, God forgive me. And he uses all of the energy of death. He channels all of it into his ring of compassion. And he blows up Mogo, killing the living planet. Mogo was more than just another member though. Mogo was the heart of the core itself and the largest deposit of willpower due to his sheer size. With his destruction, the entire Green Lantern Corps can feel his pain and they all cry out completely incapacitated by his destruction. Then with Kyle screaming, How could you, John? How could you kill Mogo? There had to be another way. There had to be hope. John says that there is no way to fix this, Kyle. I needed to do it. Now we need to go help Guy and Hal. And he teleports the two of them away. Back down on the surface, the destruction of Mogo was so great that even Krona is paralyzed by his pain. And Guy and Hal use this to their advantage. 
Guy quickly jumps down into a fist fight with Krona while Hal moves for the Book of Black. With the rest of the cores being stuck in there, he hopes that he can save them. But just then, John and Kyle come teleporting in. Everyone explains what's going on in a hurry, and they decide to use the time that the core and Krona are incapacitated to move for the power battery. If they can get Parallax out of it, they can free everyone from Krona's influence. So John teleports the book and all of them to the power battery itself, and they hit it with everything that they have trying to pull Parallax out. But their power isn't enough. Ganthet then awakens and says, This is a dark day for the core indeed. The very heart of the core has died. But we can still end this. It'll only get worse if we let Krona win. Use the remaining rings and then use everything to remove Parallax. So Hal Jordan dual wields the Ring of Avarice and Fear, while Guy takes the Rings of Rage and Love, and they hit the power battery with every emotion. But just then, the entire Green Lantern Corps comes back to its senses, and it pulls all four of the Earthlings off of the power battery. They can't do it! Everyone's fighting against them! What are they gonna do? But Ganthet yells out, Guy, you wield the rings of the two greatest extremes. You are the only one with the power to pull Parallax out of the battery. Focus on what you love and what you hate at the same time, and you can do it. So Guy figures it out, and he yells, using all of his power, I love the core, and I hate being filled with rage! And he does it. He tears Parallax out of the battery, freeing every Green Lantern Corps member from Krona's grasp. While the Green Lanterns tackle Parallax now that they're free and so they can keep him from escaping, our four heroes begin taking off their rings of the varying emotional spectrum so that they can go back to being green. And Kyle uses the power of the Blue Ring of Hope to remove Guy Gardner's Red Ring. But the fight isn't over yet. The entities still control the Guardians and Krona is still here. So the entire core of the Green Lanterns begins to attack the Entity-controlled Guardians, and Hal realizes he'll need the other cores to help control the Entities. He'll need to free them all from the Book of Black. So he brings Kyle with him and he tells him, This book tells everything that has happened and will happen. Kyle, I need you to draw a page where they all get out of the book. Foretell the future. Kyle doesn't know if it'll work, but he tries it, and it does, and he frees the primary members of every core. They all hit the ground prepared to get their rings back, even though Atrocitus is screaming because his heart is missing, because the Red Lanterns replaced their hearts with rings, and if you want to get more information on that, check out our Red Lantern video. But before the rings can come back, someone overrides the programming in the rings. And there's only one person who could possibly override every ring. Krona has taken them all onto his own hands, and he now has the power of the Entities and every core's ring. And the first thing on his agenda is to torture Hal Jordan, which he begins doing very quickly by asking him, Why do you fight for the Guardians? They think of you as flawed! And Hal struggles to get the words out. I fight for what is right. Everyone is flawed, Krona. You. Me. Everyone. But life is subjective. The Guardians' greatest flaw is that they don't see that. If anything, the Guardians have always needed help. But Krona just snickers. No one can help them. But Sinestro sees Hal about to die, and he refuses to go down without a fight. So he grabs a nearby stick and he jumps on Krona to stop him. Hal Jordan would die for the core, and so would I, he screams, as he begins to hit Krona in the head. But this is what was needed. This is exactly what a local Green Lantern ring needed. Thal Sinestro, you have the ability to overcome great fear. You have been chosen. Welcome to the Green Lantern Corps. Sinestro doesn't know what to do. He's now back in the Green Lantern Corps. But Hal says, don't question it, just fight. And the two of them bombard Krona with their willpower. And Krona screams, I am immortal! But Hal says, no, you're just old. And with that, he uses everything in his being to pierce Krona's heart, forcing an explosion of willpower and the death of Krona. Everyone looks in awe, and Atrocitus yells, Krona was mine to slaughter! The entities are now free, and they exclaim it as they take off for space. And all of the rings attempt to return to their owners. But before they can get there, Indigo One demands to know where she is. And Larflees is yelling, Keep that orange one away from me! But once the rings return to their hands, they both take their catchphrases once again. Knock and mine! The next big question is, how did Hal Jordan override the programming of a green ring that kept a lantern from killing a guardian? And what should they do about Sinestro having a green ring? Well, the Guardians teleport the other ring bearers off of Oa, and they turn to Hal. Human, what have you done? Mogo is dead. Sinestro bears a ring of our core, and you killed a Guardian. Even with Ganthet defending him, the other Guardians decide to remove Hal Jordan's ring and eject him from the Green Lantern Corps. They then teleport Hal Jordan back to where it all began. The Air Force Base back on Earth. He looks at his hands where the ring once was, and he simply says, 
This isn't how it was supposed to end. And it's not, listeners. Like I told you, this is all a part of a massive story arc by Jeff Johns. The Guardians are getting fed up with the Lanterns disobeying them. Hal Jordan is now missing his ring. Sinestro is a Green Lantern again. And then there's that whole mystery involving the First Lantern. Then, of course, there's also the story of Kyle and how he got a white ring. We've only touched the start of this tale, and I hope to see you guys next Friday for the next segment of our Green Lantern story. I'm Benny for Comic Storian, and if you want to chat about this video, follow me on Twitter, at Comic Storian. And you can also join us at our website, theweeklypull.net, where all of us big comic book YouTubers have joined together to bring you a community that you can express your opinions in. I hope to see you guys there, and I'll see you guys right here next time.